everyone. Today I am here to share with you some of my favorite thrillers of all time. I did this video last year and I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit of a hodgepodge video. I was just getting into the genre last year so I didn't read much and I still will tell you I'm a novice at thrillers. If you're expecting a really grand, illustrious, no um, knowledge-filled person full of thrillers, sadly I am not it. I'm still getting into the genre. I'm much more into it than last year so it's growing, you know, this list is not gonna be perfect, no list is, but I feel like my list has grown a bit since last year, so here's to hoping that it grows even more. So I wanna share with you today some of my favorite thriller books. You might agree with these, you might not, that's okay. We all have different opinions. These are just some of my favorite thrillers that I really love. First up is Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is one of the first thrillers I've ever read and I really enjoy it and it's still my favorite Riley Sager book. He has three books out, I've read them all, this is still my favorite. So this takes on the trope of the final girl left at the end of a horror movie. There's always one person left and it kind of goes on that trope. So we follow a character who is a final girl that survived this really brutal massacre to all of her friends and she's in this final girls club and then one of the girls in that club goes missing and turns up dead and so people are starting to think are people after the final girl so she has to navigate through that. I really enjoyed this book and would highly recommend it. All of these books I'd say are not like super creepy and over really like scary because I can't handle that type of life. <laughs> this one creeped me up quite a bit and I still really like it so would highly recommend checking it out. Next up we have You by Carolyn Kapnis. I read this last year and it's one of my favorite thrillers like top five probably. I love it. I always would recommend the audiobook for it because if you want like a creepy book use there but if you want like an ultra creepy book the audiobook is perfectly there for that. If you don't know, this book's been made into a show that's been on Netflix, Lifetime, things like that. The show is equally good as well. I always recommend reading the book first because that's a booktuber's life, really. So if you don't know, this book is about Joe, and Joe works at a bookstore in New York, and then he meets Beck, who is a patron of the bookstore, and he gets enamored by Beck as soon as he meets her, and so he decides to kind of figure out more about Beck, and that leads to kind of stalking her, figuring out where she lives, who she talks to, where she works, who she she's dating and then he really puts himself into her life and throughout the whole book the book is called You because he's like talking to you as in Beck. So you get to hear his internal monologue throughout the entire book. And it is creepy and is there and I love the book so I would highly recommend it. Next up we have The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This one is kind of a domestic thriller. I do really tend to enjoy those. Those are probably my favorite thrillers because they're the ones I can handle the most. So this book is told also kind of in a mystery as well. It says when you read this book you will make many assumptions. You will assume you're reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she's obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who, who is about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this love triangle. Assume nothing. Read between the lies. That's all I'm going to tell you about this book because it's best just knowing that. Basically we have these two women and you think one is stalking and trying to prevent something and it's just not what it seems. I do love this book. The ending I did not love. With thrillers, the endings are usually something you either hate or love and this would have been been like an ultimate favorite for me but the ending really I did not like but overall I really enjoyed this book. Definitely a very domesticated thriller that I tend to really enjoy. Speaking of kind of domesticated suburban thrillers we have Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This book follows a plethora of characters and there has been this murder that's happened and nobody exactly knows what's happening. So you follow this neighborhood and they all can kind of see into each other's houses and that's all you need to know. It's about a murder that happens in a neighborhood and you have to kind of assume anyone and everyone did it in this neighborhood. You have to figure out who exactly did it. So I really love books like that where it's kind of a suburban thriller where you go into a neighborhood and you dissect the people you know and who's hiding something. Everyone's got secrets. What's theirs? Could it be murder? Things like that. I love this Lisa Jewel one. It's my favorite by her and I would recommend it especially if you like domesticated suburban, I don't know if that's the right word for it, thrillers. Next up I have My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a recent read for me. It's been very hyped here on booktube and bookstagram basically everywhere and I really love this book. All I can tell you about this book is about this middle-aged suburban couple that's been married for a while. They have two teenage kids and they're kind of complacent with their suburban life. So they decide, hey, let's murder someone. And that's the whole basis of the book that you need to know, you know, read between the lies with every thriller book, honestly. I love this one. It was creepy. You couldn't trust anybody. It was about this marriage that was like, what? So I loved it. Would highly recommend it. Again, kind of a, you know, domesticated thriller. 
I just really tend to enjoy those, honestly. Speaking of domesticated and suburban thrillers, another recent read is Someone We Know by Sherry LaPena. I have read two other Sherry LaPena books, and this one is my favorite, I think, because of the whole suburban atmospheric of it. So then this one is very much like Watching You by Lisa Jewell. A woman goes missing and is found dead, and it's about a neighborhood, and you have to assume things. You also have a husband that's married to this wife, and he's kind of, you know, not giving out the best signals, but maybe he had something to do with his wife's murder. Maybe not. We also have a teenage boy in this neighborhood that is going around and breaking in people's houses not stealing anything just you know taking a peek around you have to piece together all of these clues all of these neighborhood friends and maybe one of them's hiding something again very much like watching you so I'd say if you really enjoy that book you'll probably really like this one I liked it I love the ending I did not expect anything coming would highly recommend checking this one out we have one that's a bit you know, hit or miss for a lot of people. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This was my very first thriller that I ever read a couple years ago. I read it because of the hype. Anyone who's everyone had heard of The Girl on the Train and I decided, hey, let this be my first thriller. And I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm holding, you know, and I don't know if I'm, you know, holding a lot of happy feelings for it because it was my very first thriller I've ever read. I don't know. But either way, I still enjoyed it. I'm sure you guys know this is about a woman who takes a train to work every day in London and she sees this couple every day and she kind of idolizes this couple because she can see a little bit into their life and then she sees something one night that she shouldn't have seen and then her life kind of spirals from there. She is a very unreliable narrator which is very common in thrillers because you don't ever know if they're telling the truth or not. She has some problems with alcohol and things like that but I still really enjoyed The Girl on the Train. I still will always enjoy it and maybe I'll reread it one day and be like, why did I like that? I don't know. I just remember it being my first thriller and I still enjoy it. Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter is a tame Karen Slaughter. I know Karen Slaughter has written a ton of books. Like I can't even like there's a lot of Karen Slaughter books. Uh, this is my first Karen Slaughter book and I don't know if it's going to be my only one because I know she writes really gripping and harrowing um, thriller books that I don't think that my heart can handle so this might be the line for me with Karen Slaughter but I still really enjoyed it so if you want to check out Karen Slaughter and you're just like I don't know if I can handle it. Piece of Her is very mild in my opinion a mild thriller. It's what we call Andrea who knows everything about her mother and then one night she doesn't. Suddenly she's on the run from things and she's learning more about her mother's life. We also get a timeline gap where it's into the past and things like that and I'm sure you can put two and two together but basically it's all about you know it says mother, hero, liar, killer. How can you tell when all you have is pieces of her? It's all about do you really know your mom? Do you really know someone in your life that you think you know? And then you learn more information and it's like your world explodes. That is what this whole book is about. I really enjoyed it. It is very light thriller but if you're into that, I would recommend checking this one out. Last book I want to talk about is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is an author I have a hate or love relationship with. I've read all of her books despite her newest one coming out, The Turn of the Key. I still need to read that one. And I, I always like her books, but I never really love them. There are some of her books that I really do not like in a dark, dark wood. And there are some that I'm like, that's pretty good. And that's The Woman in Cabin 10. It might be my favorite by her. I don't know. It's the one I think about the most that I actually have like really good feelings for if that makes any sense at all probably not this one basically is about a woman that's a journalist she gets invited to go on like this really small cruise ships opening and so she decides to go and murder happens on there pretty much when I say small cruise ship like I think there's only like 20 people on this cruise ship like it's a small one and so she's trying to piece together some things she sees something one night also there's a lot of like claustrophobic dealing with that because you're on a boat a very small one and somebody's died and you're just like what the heck's going Going on again with the unreliable narrator as well um, because you never know exactly what is going on. I remember really enjoying it. It's not like one of my all all time favorite thrillers, but I'd say if you like kind of a classic whodunit, this is a great one to check out. So there you have it. Those are some of my favorite thrillers. Like I said, I'm still getting into the genre. I don't read a ton of thrillers every single year, but I still like reading a few, you know, because I do really enjoy the genre. But my heart can only take so much because I'm a I'm a big chicken guy. Either way, if you've heard of any thrillers or if you like them, please let's talk about it in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for me of what you think I would like, again, leave them in the comments. I love hearing your guys' feedback. I hope you guys enjoy this video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.